everyone, and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Moki, and I'm joined here with Zenrot. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a, is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire souls to watching every single Shonen Jump anime out there that is available to us in English in some kind of way. With our main series being Gintama in the series that we keep we keep making plans to watch and talk about, but didn't, can never <laughs> pull through on it, <laughs> Kuroko. But I swear well, to God, we're so close to done with Gintama that it feels not worth it to like do back and forth. Yeah, we're getting we're getting to the point pretty soon where we're heavy focusing in on it. So here's one of two things are gonna happen with Kuroko. Either we're gonna finish all of Gintama and then immediately go into Kuroko. Or at some point, we'll figure out and have the perfect time and be able to go through it. It was a little bit easier when Gintama was like, oh yeah, some silly five-episode things going on here. Yeah, that you don't have to pay any attention to at all. Yeah, but now we're into the point where it's like, no, we're, we're like picking up on themes and shit. There's like multiple things going on here. We're missing things, which is what we're going to start off with uh, because... <laughs> This is a, thank God last episode was not released during Pride Month, and this is the start of Pride. We missed something from the last batch of episodes. It was during the Scandal arc, there was a bit there at the beginning during one of the OPs. The OP changed, and the OP changed and added Hasegawa as, as one of the longing women in the Gintamba backshot. <laughs> Which is hilarious. It is too good, and I am so angry at myself it's that we did so not bring it up during that time. Uh, I missed it, so I was like, I'm usually the one that brings it up, so I was like, god damn it. And someone told me specifically, hey, watch out, but I was busy with work shit. So, I usually during the OPs, I was like, okay, this is my time, and I completely forgot. But there you go. So we're going to start Pride right off. I'm going to say right there, check it out, Hasegawa. I'm even going to put it up there briefly on the screen for you to enjoy. He was the only one who actually was genuine. He happy was. Pride. He was happy Pride, everyone. <laughs> happy pride. He he would have loved to be <laughs> failures together with Gintoki. What, did he, what just... did he say? I, I would love to drop to the bottom of society with, with you. you. Yes. Oh, my God. An insanely <laughs> hard line. Our gay legend, Hasegawa, who's also married with our bisexual, uh, I'm trying to think of a good a way of saying bisexual, I was gonna say power, but that's not the right way of saying it. Icon, there you go, <laughs> bisexual icon, Hasegawa, and with that, we can start Gintama proper. So, what are we gonna be talking about today? We're gonna be talking about episodes, uh, 244 to 247, which is the thorny arc um, we're going to start with episode 244, uh, which is titled, Check It Out. So, Zen, go ahead. So, uh, <clears throat> there is this family called the Sasaki family that is, like, very influential. It's like a high society family. Uh, and one of their members joins the Shinsengumi, and it starts with Hasegawa, or not Hasegawa, I got, see, I got him on the brain now. <laughs> it starts with, um, Hijikata, and he's like, I don't care who your family is. I'll cut your head off and kick it straight to your father's lap. Don't you ever fuck with me. And then it turns out that that was all just in his head. Uh, and he is with the new recruit, um, Tetsunosuke, mm -hmm. who's like a deadbeat. Like, uh, his, the whole thing is that he's a failure. They, they call uh, him a B-boy, which is a bad boy. But B-boy yeah, is like a bad a, boy. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, <clears throat> So he's he joins the Shinsengumi to try to train him to like to become something more, um, and so he kind of gets like Hijikata gets stuck with him because Kondo's like, it's okay, it, it, it'll be fine, and Hijikata's like banging his head into the wall to the point that he's bleeding because he's so irritated by it, um, and then uh, he's like playing basketball with his friends and they're like all uh, playing basketball and they <laughs> there's a really good sequence where they keep hitting Kondo in the face with the basketball every time he tries to talk and then the scene of him passing the ball back is exactly the same every single time so he's like <laughs> talking and his his cheek injury is getting like progressively bigger because he keeps getting hit in the face with a basketball and then they're like yo gorilla pass it back and then he just like motionlessly passes the ball back to them and then keeps going <laughs> it's really funny it um then they are out in uh, the patrol car, and he has, like, his homies in the back of the patrol car, like, hanging out with him, just like his bros. Um, and then he gets, like, a lecture from Hichikata. He's like, you need to you need to stop doing that. Like, you need to get your shit together, basically. 
Um, and then Gintoki is there also for some reason, and he's like, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna arrest you." And Gintoki's like, "Oh, I I can't hear you because of the, your loud ass music." And so he destroys the radio in the car, and then um, his friends get out. Also, they just start cussing a lot at this point. <laughs> fuck. Like they say fuck like twelve times. Yeah, they say it like because the guy goes, "Oh fuck," and then Gintoki goes, "Did you just say fuck?" <laughs> you just call then, you just call me a fuck, fuck bitch. <laughs> yeah, he calls him a bitch. That's right. Uh, I don't know why they start cussing because they don't do it anymore later. Um, no. I, again, this has to be uh, my favorite. This is like one of my favorite genres, which is also why Lotus Juice is one of my favorite artists out there. What Japanese people assume rap is about, <laughs> and this is definitely <laughs> it's one of my favorite genres. And this is definitely one of them where they go, "Yo, yeah, fuck, bitch," <laughs> and it's like you got the spirit, I think, but you're not a hundred percent there. <laughs> Uh, and so, then Gintoki, like, starts hitting him, and, like, smashing up the car, and so finally he's like, alright, I'm out of here, and then he gets nailed in the back by a, by another car, which is a bunch of cops in Shinsengumi uniforms that are white instead of black, and they are the Mimawari Gumi, which I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's a reference that I don't get, or if it's just a thing. I... Um, okay, keep going, keep going. Okay. Uh, and so then they arrest Gintoki for inconveniencing the Shinsengumi because of their leader. Um, Isaburo, who's another member of the Sasaki family, is like, I'm a huge fan of the Shinsengumi. You can tell I'm a huge fan of the Shinsengumi because our uniforms look just like yours. That's how you know I'm a huge fan. And then he steals uh, Hijikata's phone and he's like, oh, I got your phone here. I'm just going to put myself in your phone. Uh, I'm also going to put you in my phone as Toshi-chan, <laughs> which I thought was very funny. And then Toshiro like gets pissed. He's like, "Oh, I'm sorry. Did I make you mad? Don't don't be offended. I just don't have a ton of friends. This is very exciting for me." Um, <laughs> and then he's like, "Oh, but by the way, uh, this guy is like a he's like he, they're half brothers because I think the the loser guy's mom was like an affair or like a concubine or something, whatever you want to call it. Not the not like his they, wife. They they say uh, like mistress. Yeah, they, they're like an affair. I think." Um, and so he's like, yeah, this guy is worthless, and you know, if you if you need to kill him, you can just go ahead and kill him. Doesn't matter to me. Um, and then Hijikata cuts up the dude's phone, and he's like, ah, there's no room in in. It's it's either the guy's phone or his own phone. I don't remember which one he cuts up, but he cuts up the phone, and he's like, there's only there's only room in my phone for thorny boys, and they don't explain what that means yet. Um, and then they're back at the headquarters, and Kondo is talking to the guy, uh, Tetsu, and he tells him about Hichikata's past and how he had a brother, and then, um, you know, they, they got separated, and, and he became a thorny boy, which apparently was a slang term that meant, like, you'll get, you'll get pricked if you mess with those guys because they're thorny and they'll cut you. Um, and so that's what he, he was a thorny boy in his youth because he was, like, a gangster or whatever. Um, and he's like, he, Takitsugaya is helping you because he knows what it's like to be you. Mm -hmm. And then you get, we get the backstory, right? Uh, well, that's the backstory is happening the whole time where there's like, oh. Hijikata was in the fire and the bandits attack and the bandits cut out his, uh, brother's like eyes. And then he kills the bandits and like cuts their eyes out or something like that. Um, I don't remember who all lost their eyes other than the brother, but I know he was like, there was a line that was like the only thing that would look at him after that were the dried eyeballs on the floor. Yes. Um, <laughs> which was a crazy line. Um, and then after that, they were all afraid of him. So he, he became a thorny boy because he couldn't be a good boy anymore after he defended his family, I guess, was the... I get, and the, I'm not really sure what he did that was wrong. I think what, but, what the, 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 the idea is after this part right here, they never looked at him the same. So, and literally, you know, not to be fucked up, his brother also never looked at him the same because he lost his eyes. True, well, lost his eyes, yeah. I can't yeah, look but, at him but, at all. But it's definitely a point of, like, he blamed himself for, I guess, not being strong enough to protect his brother before he actually lost his eyes. I mean, like, he wasn't able to actually fight back until he had actually snapped, and by that point, it was too late. Um, so he, had been, he, even though he was able to get revenge on it, he wasn't able to protect, and I guess that's the main difference here of um, when you're protecting someone, people look at you different, but when you're doing it for revenge, you know, they can only really see the monster that you are. 
At least that's what I think, anyway. <laughs> Who knows? It could be something like that. But I definitely think it might have been that, oh, holy shit, this kid just fucking destroyed those dudes' eyes. <laughs> yeah, he just obliterated those dudes' eyes. Yeah, like, listen, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's getting back at someone and killing them, and people go, okay. It's when you do it back to them where you're like, whoa, ho, 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 okay. All right, buddy, that's a little bit too far, and that's where the and that's the I guess the fucked up thing about society is that <laughs> they can take your eyes, but when you do it back to them, they look at you like the monster, the monster, just like they are. But anyway, um, but yeah, that's the end of this episode after the backstory, right, of Forty Boys. Yeah, the backstory is where it ends. Okay. Yeah. And I will now say that the 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 mimic the the how, man, I'm not gonna be able to pronounce it. Say it again, so I know how to say it. The mim the mimorigumi, the mimorigumi, <laughs> mimawari gumi, mimawari gumi. Okay, so the mimawari gumi gumi were a real faction at the specific time that um, the Shinsen gumi were around. I believe even one of the members had were involved in the assassination of Sakamoto Ryomo. Um. But yeah, back back there's there was like this whole thing of like even within the Shinsen gumi, Shinsen gumi weren't actually Shinsen Gumi until after like a specific assassination of a person and then Kondo was made the main leader and then then they become the Shinsen Gumi but yeah this is basically a uh, reference to a specific police force that was with the Tokugawa Shogunite at the specific time of the Bakumatsu period and there you go and they disbanded not long after some stuff they didn't last as i don't think they lasted as long who knows feel free to tell me again this is a very this is a lot of this i'm picking up from the yakuza game that is set around this period <laughs> <laughs> and some stuff in Fago where i look up and go like oh, okay that makes sense and then i google it and then i'm like all right i think i got it and then like years later i'm like holy shit don't i know something about this so feel free to correct me if I got any of that wrong, but that's the basic nit that you need to know is that they are a reference to a real life police force that was around at that time. But it is very silly that they are just like this Shinsen Gumi, but with like Mimua in it. <laughs> so that makes me feel like Gumi just means like police in Japanese or something. Something like that, maybe. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Who knows? How'd you like this episode, Zen? Uh, it was good. It was fine. Uh, I. I guess I shouldn't... Well, no, I guess it's not a twist. Uh, I thought the backstory was gonna be a twist and, like, not be true mm. uh, that they gave to Hijikata here. Because later on, they there's a scene where the, the loser guy is like, aren't you Thorny Toshi? And I thought he was gonna be like, what the fuck are you talking about? I thought they were gonna play it for laughs. So he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Uh, but no, it was real. <laughs> Which totally caught me off guard that that was just a real thing that happened. That this um, is, yeah. Yeah, that he just cut some dude's eyes out. Um, yeah, he really, but no, it was good. Yeah, yeah, they really went like that. Yeah, I I ended up liking this one too. I think a lot of the backstory stuff about Hijikata really they like I like the way they kind of like roll it out. Like they roll it out in pieces, and I really feel like by specific points to it, they really roll it out in a way that's like a a, a way to like just like a sla like slight emotional gut punches throughout the entire arc. I just being like, oh yeah, you thought this was bad. It actually gets a little bit worse now. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like, I like hearing about um, his time there. Usually, when we see Hijikata, he's already in his like shit heel face. Like we've already seen him with Okita's sister and all that before Kondo kind of got to him. We got we see him in that manner, and it's kind of nice to see like, well, why did he get so freaking? Sh why did he start like acting out the way he did? I feel it makes a lot of sense when someone does that to you, <laughs> that you take out their eyes, <laughs> and then maybe you change as a person from then on in. Uh, <laughs> and I also like that it's similar to the Gintoki stuff, for when we see Gintoki's childhood, it's in black and white. And then when the actual, like, when the person that actually, like, mentors them enters their life, that's when the color actually returns to their life. And it's similar to Hijikata, when he actually meets Kondo. The color kind of returns to him and stuff like that, so I think it's a very nice. That and I think just in general, black and white stuff looks cool, especially when there's like color on the red for the blood and stuff. Um, I liked a lot of the again, like I said, one of my favorite genre of of rap is Japanese person assuming that they know what rap is. Uh, 
<laughs> and this was some pretty good stuff here. The way they call themselves B boys, yeah, we're bad boys, and the way he like tries to rap and Hijikata is like so badly just wants to like his the sequence in his head where he just wants to like he's like, Oh yeah, well you got one leg rolled up, huh? Now you don't have that leg anymore. <laughs> How about that now? And he just wants to so badly do it, and I like the bit where he's like, Hey, so yeah, we cool? And he gives him, like, the fist bump, like, the ass for the fist bump. And then he breaks out of his, like, murderous rage and he goes, like, yeah, we cool. We're good here. And, yeah, the, the two dudes who, like, go up behind him as well. There's a part where they're, like, he's, like, I got him on some specific duty and they're, like, going out to get curry. And they make it look like a drug deal. <laughs> when he goes to Yamazaki, Yamazaki's, like, hey, oh, I'd like some curry. And then the two dudes, like, push him up to the side. They test his rice. And they treat it like it's cocaine or something, and then they like give him, they sign him in some curry into the side pocket. <laughs> it is really funny. Um, after Gitoki beats him up, the reason that he's up there is just like he's just nearby. Um, but I really like Hichikata's reaction where he's like telling him, was like, no, don't mess with him. That's like literally the worst person to randomly show up right here at this moment. Uh, and after he kicks his ass, he starts referring to him as Anaki, as, like, in, like, a respectful way. And when the car comes out of nowhere and hits him, he actually says, Anaki, no! <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> that's, like, the, that's, like, bro. Yeah, yeah that's, like, a, a very respectful bro in, a, like, a Yakuza type of way. Um, so I liked it. I did, like, the, the kind of start here of him being, like, a complete loser. Like, his, his meaning behind it when... Hijikata says, like, hey, if you act up, you are going to have to, like, commit seppuku or something. And then his reaction is just, like, you may as well just get it out of the way. Because I, nobody actually cares if I'm alive or dead. So I'm just going to continue living life the way I want. And then Hijikata's way of saying is, like, listen, right now you're just at a wall and all you're doing is, like, yelling at it. You're never going to be actually able to get over that wall if you don't change yourself. You can't change the wall, but you can change yourself and stuff like that. Which is all good, nice pep talk stuff. So, yeah, I ended up liking the, the start of this arc, too, and uh, where it goes from here. And the the start, <laughs> the slow start of trying to get, um, this is also a problem, because I keep calling, want to call him uh, Tatsunoku, and that's not his name. It's a Tetsunoku. It's tet Tetsunosuke. Tetsunosuke, yeah, there you go. Yeah, but I kept wanting I kept wanting to call him Tatsunoko for some reason. It's just like the word looks Tatsunoko. close. And it's Capcom, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's what. <laughs> apparently, that's what's in my head. I'm like, just like, you get him, Tatsunoko. I was like, that is not his name. I know it's not his name. They're saying his name directly at me, and I am fighting against myself to not just call him Tatsunoko at every single. Because <laughs> that is not his name. But anyway, that was episode two forty four. So let's go on to episode two forty five which is titled Thorny and Rosy. So go ahead, Zen. Uh, so the Tetsunosuke has completely, like, flopped, and he even, like, looks like a... Like, he's, like, a different art style. He's, like, round. Shoujo. And, like, uh, yeah. He's very, like, nice-looking now, and he's like, I'm, a, I'm gonna do my best now. I'm a, I'm a good boy now. <laughs> d d um, d oh, man. Do you remember that guy from Or Collection who looks exactly like him? No. There, There's, like, um... Fuck, it's from the same guy. There's, like, a character who was in Or Collection who is made by, um... The I can't believe I'm forgetting the actual because I read this manga. It's the Knights of the Zodiac, but it's not Saint Seiya. The Saints. It's made by the Saint. He kind of looks like one of the Saint Seiya characters from the '70s that this is the the previous um dude had made, and I was, and I kept thinking of it in the back of my head, thinking it's like, oh, is this a reference? And it turns out no, it's just a reference to specifically old times. But he has like the the like completely different art style eyes from every other character that has showed up in Gintama so far. I'm going to see if I can find him. <laughs> you keep going. Go ahead, Zen. Uh, so, he's like a good boy now. And uh, we see Gintoki, and he's like trying to kill um, Okita. He's like throwing the like a ball on a chain at him over and over again. And he's like, should blame the other guy. Or blame the... Um, Blame the guy and Hichikata for getting you arrested, not me. I didn't do anything. And then Gintoki's like, I didn't do anything either. And then um, they like. He shoots the ball, and the ball explodes, and um, he's like, We will. Uh, 
we we didn't realize you were a friend of the Shinsengumi. We'll we'll compensate you for your pain and suffering. And he's like, write your write your figure on the back of this flyer. And Gintoki gets all pissed off about it. Um, and then Hichikata is training Tetsunosuke, and he's like trying to help him be stronger. And then Tetsunosuke um, brings up the past and everything, and he's like. Ah, who the fuck told this guy? <laughs> who told this guy about my thorny past? Um, and so then Hijikata's like, here, you can, you know, you can... He gives him, like, a letter. Um, because apparently he writes letters to, like, his deceased brother. Yeah, um, but uh, at this point, you don't know that. Oh, he, I thought that was... Oh, I guess you don't. I guess you don't. That is why he gives it to him, but I yeah, guess they he don't gives him, He gives him a letter because he says to him specifically, like, hey, I think after he gets, like, a beating from him, he says, I want to be stronger... And I want you to like specifically patch things up with your brother because it sounds like you. Well, because yeah, he's like, I, I want to be stronger, but I want you to be strong too, and and fix things with your with your brother, basically. Yes, and so he's giving him a letter, and he says takes it as a way as like he's gonna start communicating with him again. He's gonna, he's um, gonna do it. That's why he has the letter from his brother. But yeah, later on yeah. we learned that his brother had long ago passed away. Uh, and then um, Gintoki gets given a mission by the bad guy because he's like, you're going to go and you're going to join this like terrorist cell. Um, and then he ends up helping them kidnap Tetsunosuke. Um, and then the Shinsengumi are going to like try to save him. And then the Mimawari Gumi show up. And then it turns out that it's like a, it's like a double, triple cross. And so they're like, all right, we're going to kill all the terrorists, but we're also going to use this as an opportunity to kill Tetsunosuke as well, because I hate that guy. Um, and then, then this girl shows up, and her name, I think, is um, no Nobume. She's like a super strong assassin or whatever. Um, and the coolest thing ever happens, which is she's like takes Kondo by surprise, and she's going to kill him. And as she goes to draw uh, her sword... Okita shows up and stabs his sword through her sword to stop her from pulling it out any further. Mm -hmm. Not how that would work. It would just completely snap in half if that happened. Yeah, but it was super cool. Um, and uh, so one moment because someone just knocked on my door. So let me just to be sure oh, that yeah. it's open. Okay. Uh, where did we stop? Uh, it's a very good question. We're back, everyone. Uh, sorry about that. There's been some stuff going on in my apartment buildings that I will talk about after it has been settled. <laughs> Because it is an ongoing situation. Um, let me see what we're talking about. Uh, really cool. Okita un uh, stops the sword with the sword. Right, yeah. Okita stabs his sword through her sword and, like, catches it. And they're setting up for a showdown. Um, and then they... Uh... Oh, yeah, so then Hijikata's like, all right... We can't let the Mimori Gumi get to the terrorists because they'll kill Tetsunosuke if they do. Uh, and we also can't let the terrorists kill him, so we have to get up there and we have to save him first. Um, Okita and Kondo both sneak up into the building to try to like get behind them before the, the anyone gets there. Um, Nobume is also running up into the building. And then Hijikata and the guy's brother uh, square off and get ready to, to throw down. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's this episode. Okay. How'd you like this one, Zen? Uh, it was cool. I liked the uh, the setup and how the, it was like a big, intricate plan. And uh, I think the later ones are a bit cooler because I like how like all the strategy pans out where they're mm -hmm. each trying to like do their own thing. Um but it was cool. Yeah, I, this, I enjoyed it. Yeah, this is a very definite good setup of also sh like the the way that this guy kind of like calculates stuff is like he there's something about him that is like evil, but like not outwardly evil to the point where you believe he's, he's like a he's one of those ca like what's a good word for it affably evil I guess you would call it he's like a total douche yeah but he's like polite he's not like he's even like beyond polite he's like nice yeah. otherwise like, like he, he's just kind of like a, a nice guy but then also he's a huge asshole so it's like 
Yeah. yeah. It, it's, the, it's the worst kind of person, because it's definitely one of these people who, like, like they fuck you over, and then you say, hey, man, what the fuck? And he goes, like, hey, man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean for that to happen. And then you kind of go, like, well, is he being real right now? I actually is he being a dick or? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a very much like affable evil is a good way of kind of explaining it. But he makes it so that he's a pretty good foil to the Shinsengumi. Like if the Shinsengumi are a bunch of like knucklehead dumbasses, he's his the, their group is a bunch of just like cold calculating dudes who are like the exact opposite in a lot of ways of the Shinsengumi, where the Shinsengumi feel like they actually legitimately care about each other. And his group seems to only really focus on him and what the, the specific ambitions that he has, and they're ready to do whatever orders that he specifically has to say for it. So it feels very different and a kind of like and funny. It even it even comes down to the way they dress of like one is very black and one is very white. Like <laughs> yeah, like fully fully like opposite colored. Yes, down down to that and everything. Um, I like the bit because so in this episode he asks uh, Gintoki if he's willing to do a job, and then we find out that the job is to infiltrate that specific group for him. And they have a bit together where he he it's it was brought up a little bit in the last episode where he took um, Hichikanda's email address, and in this one he takes Gintoki's, and he's like, "All right, um, send me a Wait, message." What does Gintoki say his email address is? It's like go underscore die at whatever is like a normal old go, Japanese it's, it's, Gmail it's, thing. It's like go die um, it, not patriots. It's like go die the government. Something like that. Because I think it, I want to say it like leads to Katsura's page. <laughs> Uh, like it, it leads to the concert speech because I think that's actually a concert's email that he gave him because it like leads to the Elizabeth. Remember when they were doing like this whole bit about like um, when he originally got the phones? There was this bit about Katsura like working for the um, if you want to be a part of the Joy Patriots and do this and do that, <laughs> and then, like they showed a bunch of different like Elizabeths and different outfits. I want to say that's what he sends him the email to it, but I wish I could remember that fucking email because it was a very good one. And he actually legitimately puts it in <laughs> and thinks that it's his. Um, uh, but I, yeah, I like the bit where he like they're email emailing to each other, and he sends one of the messages, hey, "Please answer back to me." And he, like he closes the phone, and then he gets another message. He goes like, "Hey, um, uh, we got donuts." And make sure to message me if you want us to save one for you. And then he closes the phone, he gets it up, and he goes like, just kidding, we saved one for you, and also I got you this lucky charm to wish you best on your on your mission. Please message me back to tell me how what things are going. And he closes it again, and he goes and he basically says another message where it's like, Rabbits die if they're if they get too lonely, and then it's like a picture of him hanging himself. <laughs> And then, then he closes the phone and he fucking destroys it. And then he sees to the side of him and a phone fucking waddles up to him. And he gives him another phone. He's like, damn you and your phone preparation. It's like, I'm not here to ask you to reply to my messages. I actually have a legit message. Your dudes are on the go. But I thought that scene was so fucking funny of him continue getting message. And it's like, the way he speaks is like completely different from how he speaks normally. Because he's like leaving like emojis he's like leaving the kirby emoji from japanese like <laughs> style things is really good and well done i thought it was a very good bit um they th they do this for the next three episodes uh tetsunotsuke keeps i fought everybody in, in me to say him to tetsunotsuke but he leaves he every uh for the next three episodes he does a rap intro of how he's like explaining yeah, all of every it every episode he like raps it yeah yeah and I, I don't remember this one but i really like some of the up ones because he's like he's like trying to explain about how he's like yo i'm trying to improve my life yo <laughs> let's go <laughs> i like it too because at some point um it's either Hichikata or uh, I think it's Hichikata. He's like, this is supposed to be a serious art. Can you, sh yeah, can you shut up? I went from B boy. Now I'm a C boy. And then like his homies back him up. Charity boy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's really good. I also do like it's that. Really funny. Yeah. I also like that bit where he's like, I'm no, I, I need, I can't be a B boy anymore. I need now. I need to now progress. I need to be a man. So now I'm a sea boy, cherry boy. And he turns into like an anime otaku and they're like, I think you're regressing. Like you're doing the opposite <laughs> of what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> uh, that's really good. And yeah, I really like this episode. It was a lot of good setup. 
Um, I ended up really liking Tetsunosuke, and I want to say just because he's a silly goofball, but yeah, I also he's think just a silly little guy. He is a silly little guy, but I think a lot of him, the things that he's struggling with, are things that I find like it's like, yeah, I can understand where you're kind of coming from, the feeling of like feeling like you're a failure and trying to improve yourself, but it seems like it's just like. The hardest thing that a lot of people don't tell you when you try and improve yourself is that it can feel insurmountable, where the point is, like, so many times during it, you just want to give up even though you know it's the right thing to do, and that's what a lot of people end up doing. And it's the specific fight to actually trying to improve yourself I end up finding a lot more interesting than the actual, like, when someone just, like, is able to do it and it's super easy, I prefer to see, like, this kind of stakes where he's like, actually, no, this super sucks, and every single part of this makes me want to quit, but I'm just gonna, I have, there's, like, I'm too stubborn, I need to keep going, because <laughs> there's nothing else, so, really liked it. And yeah, I thought it was another good episode. But yeah, these upcoming ones are going to be real cool. Especially the the Okita thing was just the start of some of the cool stuff that's about to happen. Uh, let's go to episode 246, which is called Festival of Thornies. Go ahead, Zen. 246, uh, we're in like the middle of the, the raid on this building to try to save everybody. Um, try to save Tetsunosuke from the terrorists. Uh the the two forces are like fighting each other and it's kind of confusing because just like white coats and black coats fighting each other look exactly the same otherwise um sasaki and hijikata are fighting and sasaki has like this weird fighting style where uh he like shoots bullets and then when you dodge the bullet he cuts you um the assassin for the mimowari gumi is destroying people and they're like okay this is not good because not only do we have to get there, um, we have to like stop her from drawing too much attention because then that might upset the the terrorists who will kill the guy. But if we let her get there first, she'll just kill the guy anyway. So we have to get there. Uh, and then there's another cool scene when um, she's going to fight these two dudes, and then they get cut down from behind, and Okita steps out from like the dark doorway, and they start fighting each other. Um, Apparently, she's offended because in the last episode, he said he would stick his sword up her ass. And so, uh, Okita's like, she's not after him, she's after my head. And she's like, no, I'm after your ass. <laughs> um, they start fighting, and Hijikata starts getting really fucked up by um, the, the Mimowari Gumi leader. And he is slowly losing, and Tetsunosuke is, like, breaking down, and he's like, no, don't don't uh don't don't do it for me man come on just leave me uh and then he kind of stands up and he's like all covered in blood and everything and he like lights a cigarette in the, the way that he always does when this shit happens mm. um and so the guy goes to shoot him again and then he like dashes forward and stabs the bullet and causes it to split in half and then he also stabs through the guy's gun and he uh, slams him into the wall, like by the sword, by stabbing him through the chest. Um, but then it turns out that the uh, Mimori Gumi is also attacking the terrorists, and so Hijikata tries to get up there to save him before either group ends up uh, killing him. But then he he gets up there, and then Gintoki is there, and he uh, has fought off the Mimori Gumi guys. And uh, he like can't tell if Gintoki's on his team, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm a I'm a big terrorist guy. How about you fight me, buddy? Like, I'm gonna kick your ass." He's like, "Oh yeah, I don't even care about that, dude. Why don't you just kill him then?" And so Gintoki just kicks him off the building, <laughs> and he kind of like, "Did you just actually kill him?" And then Gintoki goes, "Don't get mad at me. You told me to kill him." And then they go rushing at each other like they're gonna fight, but then um. Fuck, who is the bad man guy? Yamazaki. Yamazaki uh, catches him as he's falling. And he's like, I got him. I, I got the hostages secure. And so then Kondo goes, all right, good job, guys. You, you guys can go nuts now. Uh, the, he calls them like the thorny boys. Like, you guys can go nuts, thorny boys. And then they stop like mid-attack when they're about to hit each other. And they turn toward everybody else with like scary smiles on their their faces yeah they're doing the same smile from uh benny zakura arc mention <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, which is really good. Uh, this is also the episode where we learn that um, Hijikata's brother has died. Because the reason that after Hijikata gets a uh, low diff and he's on the floor, they're going to go invade and they're going to go kill... Uh, how, now I'm just gonna uh, Tetsunosuke. I was about to call him Tatsunosuke Shigo, and I was like, "That's not his name." <laughs> Tetsunosuke. Um, the other guy says, "Like we know that this is like the the name is a fake name, and the real address was being sent to the Mimurgumi, so we know that it's coming to you." And he goes, "Like wait, what? It wasn't actually being sent to his brother." And then we figured out that uh, we find out that um, he sent him a letter specifically to tell him, like, "Hey." Your brother's really trying to improve himself. He's not ready now, but I think someday he will be ready. And when that day comes, um, please look at him with adoration because I know that's specifically what he wants is that he just wants the love of his brother. And I'm here to, I'm just telling him to tell you, like, I think it's important for you to be there in his life and for both of you to be together and for you to reconcile before it's too late. And then that's when we see that he's at his brother's grave. And that his brother had died, like, a long time ago. Um, and that that's why he was sending the letter. And then that dude shoots the letter, and he's like, this is stupid. That was a waste of my time. Let's go in. The, let's kill him. And then Hijikata does the fucking boss-ass shit of standing up with the with the, with the the cigarette and going to go fuck him up and well, stuff. Yeah, because he's, like, down. Like, he's down and out. And they're like, oh, my God. It's funny how they do it, too, because... Um, they all go to rush the building and then they stop and you just see them all standing there and then two of them stand to like like they step to the side and part so that you can see Hichikata standing there in front of the building <laughs> yeah it's really good and then uh, that's also uh, it's really awesome what he ends up doing but i also really like the part where he's like starts shooting him to get him out of the way and he just doesn't fucking move he just stands there <laughs> while gunshots are like going left and right of him and he goes to go take a smoke um uh, yeah, really cool. So, how'd you like this episode, Zen? It was good. It was really cool. Hijikata's always awesome when he's being cool. It's true. Um, I completely forgot Gintoki was in this. So, when he showed up for a minute, I was like, what the fuck are you doing here? And I was like, oh, right. <laughs> right, I forgot he did the thing. I was so engrossed in, like, what Hijikata had going on that yeah. when Gintoki showed up, I was almost like, are you fucking serious? And I was like, oh, wait, right. <laughs> He, he is part of this. <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah, no, they they established him. Okay, all right, we're good. Put down the. You were about to have a. You were probably about to have an actual legitimate Vegeta moment, where you say like, "Oh yeah, of course, Kentucky has to be the one to save the day. <laughs> you can't give it to someone else." No, it's not that kind of thing. They set this up. <laughs> Don't worry. He's just here to for support. Um, what else did you like? Um. The, the little bit at the end too where they almost look like they're gonna fight and he's like on the on the famous joy patriot freedom fighter the white yaksha I'm gonna kill you um, and then they both stop and they're like they're like ah they're they're buddies uh, that was always good too because I almost thought they were gonna fight for a minute I was like what the fuck are they doing <laughs> um, you never know when sometimes with Gintama where where it's gonna go in a specific direction <laughs> and then um, I also really liked when Kondo just shoots the shit out of the helicopter with the rocket launcher. Oh yeah, that's right. That it's when he fires off the rocket launcher. We we end up seeing later where that. So it's insane what he, what he does here because I actually need to comment. I was gonna mention in the next episode we see what happens when he shoots it, and what he does is that the bazooka shoots. It doesn't hit the plane. Because that would be directly hitting one of the min the Mimo Mimo Gumi. He hits directly where Hijikata and Gintoki are. So he at the entire time was like, "Wait a minute, how the fuck did he make that shot?" Because <laughs> the bro bro bent the bazooka mid air to make it go backwards. Yeah, it was uh, it was rad. It I like when Kondo gets to do stuff. It's cool. I, I do. Uh, I think he's actually really well used in this one. Like, you actually get to see... So, they. I like that they um, they show that Kondo is competent, but he's obviously not as strong as Okita and Hijikata. But he's, like, good for the team in other ways of being actually, like, a legitimately good leader. Um, but he has a really good bits here. This part here where he actually gets to contribute, where he's actually going to go help and do stuff like that. And we forgot to mention it, but the part where after he gets hit by the basketball, he gets hit by it three times, and then he goes, 
All right, so never shoot with your left hand. That's always for some. That's for passing. And then all the Shins and Gumi start playing uh, basketball. And then we come back later in the next episode, and he's having another pep talk with um, with um, Tatsunosuke. And all the Shins and Gumi are playing basketball now. <laughs> They're not training with the sword anymore, and he's, like, in a specific, like, basketball outfit now while he's giving, like, this heartfelt, uh, speech about, like, oh, yeah, let me tell you about this stuff right here. Yeah, let me, let me give you the backstory for it here. And I also really like that because Yamazaki's in the back, and he gets ignored, and he starts a fight between them, and they still don't choose to fight with him at all. So it's all really good stuff. Uh, back to this episode, though. Yeah, this episode was really fucking good. Um... That that part where he like, um, uh, when he's when they're fighting originally, like the way that this guy fights is very like, um, it's funny to think about because I remember this because every time uh, Gint give uh, I mean Gintama makes fun of this themselves. They're not really a se an action series that's known for like special moves. So this guy doesn't really have like a special move in parentheses. He has like I shoot the gun and then when they try and dodge me, I just hit them where they're gonna dodge. So it's, like, very, like, practical, kind of, like, even though, practically, this would still be an insane thing to try and do to somebody. <laughs> it is not that easy to shoot a gun and be like, okay, obviously they're going to dodge the bullet and they're going to go this way and I'm going to slash him there. Um, but I really like the fight with him and Hijikata and the part where he's like, okay, this is easy. I shoot the bullet. If he dodges it, um, he either he doesn't dodge it and he gets shot and I win or he dodges it, and then I slash him, and then I win. It's super simple. And Hijikata has, like, the full-on, like, locked-in face. <laughs> a locked-in demon face as, like, the camera super zooms into his face. And then he shows with the sword, like, it goes to the bullet. And then they show the sword, like, going to the bullet, and the sword and the bullet clash <laughs> as he goes completely through him. And then they show his face of him going, like, oh, I didn't actually expect any of that shit. And <laughs> he gets stabbed through. It was really fucking cool. <laughs> it was really good. Really well done. Um, the fight with Okita, also really well done. And they both... The, I like the part where she says it's like, it's specifically because you have the same eyes as me. Like, we're not actually, like, samurai. We're killers. And that's why she's also, like, taking some kind of form of, like, um, disrespect towards it. Because it's obvious that this is... So Basically, she found one of her people. So now she needs to kill him. That's the only way that this can kind of go down. And so I also thought that was a kind of a good kind of match for Okita as well. Someone who is exactly the same as him, who is just straight up killer stuff. And yeah, I like the part with Gintoki where he like reveals that he's the, the, what was it? White Yashishara? No. White, White Yaksha. White Yashka. White Yashka. And he says like, I'm a joy patriot, which is really funny because he's not lying. That is what he was called when he was fighting specifically yeah. in that and it's really funny because they follow this up in the next episode in an amazing way. <laughs> yeah, they do. Wait, but, is this is this the one where Hijikata... Not Hijikata. Um, Okita ends the fight with the girl, or is it in the next It's one? in the next episode. So we'll, there's a really good line in when he's ending the fight. I don't remember if it was uh, in this one or the next one. It's, it's going to be in the next one. So we'll go to episode 247, and this one is called Letter from Thorny. Go ahead, Zen. Uh, okay. So, 247, um, they do the rap again in the beginning because there's a rap in every single one of them. And I yeah. think, yeah, this is one where Hijikata screams and he's like, stop, stop doing that. This is a, um, this is also my favorite rap of like, yo, yo, they captured me, yo. <laughs> yeah, I think at this point he's literally, uh, all the lyrics are literally just like, I've been like this for like two straight weeks, man. Come I get, get me out of here already, so yo. get me out of here, yo. Tired of this, yo, yo, you throw me off the building. Oh, fake out. <laughs> they actually got me. <laughs> yo, go. <yo. laughs> it is really good. And then I think Gintoki joins in on this one, like, briefly, where he goes like, yeah, yo. <laughs> and then those of Kichikata has enough, and I was like, you know, you fuckers, this is a serious arc. <laughs> All right, go ahead, uh, Yeah, He's like, That's just, it's, it's too serious for this. Stop it. Mm -hmm. uh, um. Yeah, then him and Hijikata smash down a helicopter. Um, and they're all like the the terrorists are trying to run away. They're like, "All right, we're going to we're going to get out of there." But they keep like um, bumping into like increasingly worse situations. Like they run into uh, Okita and the girl fighting, 
and Okita has a baseball bat, and she has a, I think, Batman. a ping pong paddle. Oh yeah, one of the is it? Ben? I think it, it was a ping pong, pong paddle. It's it might be. Pong. Okay, right. yeah, and they were they were like hit, they were like doing a volley, and they're like, oh god, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> they're gonna kill us. And then they go to run down the stairs, and all of a sudden they all start getting hit in the head with Anpan, <laughs> and it's Yamazaki throwing like an Anpan at them, and they're like, fuck, okay, we gotta get out of here too. And then they turn a corner, and it's just Kondo. Well, it's Kondo's head on, like, a gorilla body. And he's clung to a pole. And he's just, like, slowly humping the pole. <laughs> and they're like, oh, my God. <laughs> we can't. Like, what are we supposed to do? He um, likes the sensation on his crush. Yeah, it was very unusual. And I think at one point they're like, oh, my God. We're never going to get that image out of our brains. Uh, and then uh, they're like, oh, my God. The Shinsengumi lost. There's only one guy left standing, but then it's Heiji Kata in a stolen uniform. Uh, and basically, they had like switched the uniforms to get them all to like, to, like throw them off that the the wrong side had lost or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the, the girl and Heiji, uh, the girl and Okita are finishing their fight, and then she's like, "You should know not to sheath your sword until your target is dead." And he's like, uh, oh yeah, I don't carry a sheath, but I have somewhere else that I, you got anywhere I can stash my sword, <laughs> which I thought was really good. Um, uh, and I think he also, I don't remember if it was this episode or the last one, but when uh, he's talking to her and he's, she's like, you're a killer like me. And he's like, well, you seem pretty good at killing buildings, not people so far, <laughs> which I thought was good too. Uh, but then the building ends up collapsing um, because he's like, yeah, I don't carry a, I don't carry a sheath. And then he leaves, and then um, they go to like send reinforcements in there, and then they—that's when they realize that the Shinsengumi people who were defeated were actually the Mimori Gumi people, and that they had slipped out in the other uniforms. Um, and they're like, "All right, we're gonna kind of just like split the credit or whatever, and we're just gonna like call a truce here, basically." Um, and then they're like, oh, the the Mimowari Gumi gets all the credit for taking down the gang. And the, But then uh, Hijikata's like, oh, no, that's okay, because we arrested a terrorist on par with Katsuro. We got the white Yaksha. And he's like, that's not even me anymore, man. <laughs> uh, and he's, like, super pissed off because he helped them out. Um, but then they he ends up, like, getting let go because Tetsu backs him. Um, and then... He ends up driving Tetsu to uh, Hijikata's brother's grave, where they're going to deliver a letter. Um, and I think it's his wife that's visiting, or mother? I don't think they say. It's, it's his brother's wife. Because she okay, says, my husband was always it. waiting for Oh, I guess she letter. did say husband. Yeah. Um, and they go there, and then uh, they're like, oh, you must have a letter from from Hichikata or whatever, from, from Toshiro. Um, and then uh, they end up leaving. And he had had, like, a letter he wrote himself, basically. And he's like, no, you know, I, we don't need that because, um, like, I could never let them read this letter now that I, I've seen what Toshiro does and what Hichikata does and all that stuff. And he turns it into a paper airplane and he throws it out over the river. And then it goes to... Um, Hijikata in a hospital bed, and he's also trying to write a letter. And he's like, "Yeah, man, I can't, uh, I can't think of anything to write." And he like lays back, and then he also sees, or he also has a letter folded up into a paper airplane that like falls off of his um, desk. Mm. And then it ends there with the credits rolling in his letter, which was really cool. It's like inside the letter, it was, it's rolling. It the, is really well uh, done. Credits. Um, and then I also forgot. There's a bit where the bad guy. The Mimari Gumi bad guy is like trying to get the assassin girl out of the destroyed building using a fishing rod with a donut on the end of it. <laughs> to get her out of it. Yeah. And then Takasuji shows up and he's like, Yeah, I'm here. Be an <laughs> evil. You wanna be evil? And the guy's like, Maybe. And then it ends. We both had the same reaction of what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> what, are you doing? Doing? Yeah. what are you doing here? <laughs> By God, that's Takasuji's music. Play it right now. <laughs> Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then it. <laughs> uh, I, 
trying to remember. Was there any specific... No, okay, no, it ends. It ends with the... Um, the next preview on where it's going to be uh the, if there was any t really hit that this was t took place in the 2000s like 2010s the next episode is a reference to uh slumdog millionaire <laughs> with uh with hasagawa instead <laughs> so we got that to look forward to for next week but that that's the end of this episode uh how'd you like it zen uh it was good it was it was a sweet ending it, it was it's nice to have an emotional uh, Gintama ending that's not inherently, like, the worst tragedy of all time. Uh, it's just, like, nice. Um, yeah. I thought that was sweet. I really liked the bit where he throws the paper airplane over the river. I thought that was very sweet. Um, mm -hmm. It was good. It was really good. Those, those, that, I remember the other bit. There was also another bit where they show Hijikata. I think it's near the end of the ED. Um... Of him specifically walking through the thorns and then just kind of growing up and seeing that at the end there's, I think, no more thorns anymore. Or, like, he he goes from it walking for it as a kid and he's, like, a little bit fucked up and then by the end of it he's kind of smiling and stuff. So, um, to continue the thorn metaphor of stuff going on. Uh, yeah, I really like this episode. It was a nice, it was a nice arc. Uh, uh, Hijikata is definitely a favorite character i think it's, it's pretty easy to say a favorite character for both of us <laughs> for, for, for both of us uh -huh. he's absolutely oh, a sure. cool dude um i liked hearing his backstory his backstory is a very um it's sad but in it's in it's a way it's a very relatable kind of like story of you know he his brother he did this um they specifically say in here like because the wife gives a little bit more context about what he does he was like yeah he comes here every month to, to leave his letters because the last time he ever interacted with his brother was when <clears throat> he was going to head off with Kondo to go form up the Shinsengumi. So on that last day, they just like sat there in silence with each other. And before he left, his brother said, hey, Hijikata, make sure to write to me. Um, uh, please write to me. Um, and Hijikata left without ever saying anything. And... They say, like, yeah, he he did end up sending letters. Like, he sent them every month. Um, and this is the part where I was like, wait a minute. How did his brothers read and they're blind? And she's just like, oh, yeah, he always looked forward to it. He would always ask me specifically, hey, did it come in? Did it come in here? Um, and she would always say, like, yeah, it is. And then she reveals what was on the letters that he always sent his brother every month. And every single letter that he always sent was just blank. There was nothing there. Which is why he says specifically, it's too late for me and my brother, because he was never actually able to, like, say the words that he wanted to say to him before it was too late. And I thought it was a very, like, it, the, the, the part the part that I actually, like, I was like, oh, man, that just, that just really hurts, is the part where she's like, I think it's actually just nice to know that someone's still alive, you know? I was like, that don't, don't, don't fucking do this to me right here, right now, man. That's just unbelievable. That was, like, a level of sad to me where I was just like, oh, come on. This is like too much already as it is. Leave me alone. I've already <laughs> accepted everything. <laughs> Let me be. Let me be, Gintama. Let me be free. So he ends up leaving and that's why he makes it because he actually did write something. And he says like, oh yeah, I just can't. I, I don't. Like now he feels the same way of like, I don't know what to say to his brother either. <laughs> after seeing that he doesn't even know what really to say. So... Yeah, it was real, real good stuff. And all the action stuff was also fucking fantastic and well done. Like, when Hijikata and Gintom, uh, Gintoki are teaming up, the reason I said that this is only four episodes, because I was like, if they teamed up against with each other, there's no way that this episode goes on for another two episodes. Literally impossible. Uh, when they're fighting against the helicopter, uh, they fucking use their swords to, like, shave off piece of rocks to destroy the windshield of the helicopter. <laughs> So that they can't see anything, uh, which is really good. Well done. Um, I was like the bit with uh, with, with all, the, all the stuff with Okita and the assassin girl, which I want to say I, they must only say her name like once because I could not remember what her name was. Because for the most part, they always called her assassin or her. But apparently it's no, no, Nobumi. That's her actual name. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that fight with him was really good. The way he, like, uh, dropped the building on her, he was like, that's a perfect she for you. <laughs> and he just, like, fucking walks away from it is really good. I think, like, he doesn't even, like, really 
I mean, he fights her semi-seriously, but she doesn't actually try and kill her and stuff like that. Which I think it actually goes back to when he goes there at the end of when they're all together. Is that he says something very specific, which is Kondo says like, Hey, we may have started the fight, but it's you guys who threw the first punches. So it actually makes me think that they were on purpose not trying to fuck up a little bit too much of the other dude so it'd be like oh no no you guys and you're like hey we may have started it but you guys are the ones who actually escalated to the point where <laughs> you started like throwing hands with us and stuff like that so we get off scot free on that one i really did like that the 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 way it ended was actually like a tactical kind of like okay so we beat you in this way get out of here and stuff like that and yeah really good uh backstory stuff it was a really good encounter i really liked a lot of the characters in here i'm really curious to see what's going to be happening with um the stuff they were setting up for like later on with uh takatsuji and stuff like that and i was like oh man wh what's going on here does make me think um there's more to come and in general it's just weird for me to see him at all so it immediately like pricks up my ears i'm going like hey wait what 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 Back up. <laughs> He's in this. This has to go into something way larger. I'm not. I'm about to see the consequences of this a hundred episodes from now. <laughs> Can't wait. <But> yeah, <laughs> real, real, real good episode. Really liked it. Um, and it was a real nice arc as well. Uh, yeah. Anything else to say, Zen? Uh, no, not really. No, real well. Just is another. Just a fantastic arc then. Let's go on and say what's looking like for next week. Like I said, um, get ready for Slumdog Millionaire, but with Hasegawa next episode. <laughs> yeah, who wants to be a millionaire? Hasegawa edition. Yes, episode 248 to 252, which is another five episodes. Starting with the Hasegawa one and then ending with We're Sorry and then a remark. This is the third time I've seen this. Last episode of Gintama. <laughs> So, uh, I remembered that someone did leave a whole message for me to explain this specific stuff that's about to come up, but we're finally hitting the part where I think you could say, uh, some stuff was happening about them trying to end the show, <laughs> and specifically end Gintama, and so maybe some miscommunication from the gorilla mangaka himself, where he said, I think it's ending, and then he said, actually... I might have a little bit more in me. And then the anime people who were getting ready to finish it were going, wait a minute. What do you mean that you have more to go? We've already made the joke so many times, my guy. So looking forward to that. Uh, Going to be some interesting times up ahead. And then after that, we'll have the Morgan. It's funny to say after the last episode, we'll have another arc, which is going to be the Kintama arc. Uh, which is going to be episodes 253 to 256. And then after the Kintama arc is the Courtesan of a Nation arc, which is another five-episode arc. And this is another one that I've not read anything about, but I have heard its name uh, as something. And then we'll have another arc with a, another episode, which is another last episode of Gintama. <laughs> so we got quite a three weeks ahead of us in theory um zen so looking forward to that uh and now we get to the part of the show where we say hey what if you want to see more zen you can go over to his channel for shonen and chill zen uh i already know what's happening in shonen jump this week because i caught up to sakamoto <laughs> days Hey, he made hey, it. Hey, I did it. Now there's very few. Obviously, that is not what pe some people were expecting me to say, but some shit happened in Shonen Jump this week. <laughs> uh, I was yeah, just. It's, it's a week. It's a week, that's for sure. If there was ever a time. Are you, would you. Okay. Without going into details, would you be able to put up that hand as a thumbnail? <laughs> Too excited. This is what we're going to be talking about this week. Uh, I don't think so. But no. if if YouTube won't freak out, maybe. I mean, YouTube freaks out when I put up like. Actually, no. I think I've said this before. Um, no, I've I've never said this before. I had like this this issue where for some reason YouTube was finding offense with a thumbnail mine from Fago, where it was just too. Um, dark-skinned female characters in bikinis, and I was like going, wait a minute, 
all the other women in bikinis of other nationalities you had no problem with, but it's specifically mm. these two that you have an issue with? What's going on here? And then after I made like a, a, a tweet going like, I don't know, it feels a little bit weird to me. I put up some, there is a <laughs> thumbnail where I accidentally put up a porn artist's work up there and I had no idea until way later. Oh no. And that, oh, that dear. specific thumbnail has never caused me an issue. Never, not once. And when I look at it back and I look at it, I'm like, that's clearly something else going on. But I cut it off at an specific point where maybe people can't see it. But I thought it was always really weird how the thumbnail sensor where they were just like, it's not okay. And then I was like, what? What the fuck is going on? I don't understand. <laughs> I wish someone would get back to me because I just don't understand what's wrong with this when they're just like, it wasn't even like one of those, because obviously there would be a plenty when it comes to a gotcha game, but it wasn't even risky. They were just like chilling out. Like one of them was reading a book. I thought, <laughs> I thought it was just really nice art, but no, YouTube was like, get this smut off of <laughs> our platform. We have other things to deal with, so... Yeah, I don't know. Good luck with that, Zen. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you'll figure out something to put up there. It's going to be a uh, very fun... I got a message before... You know how good I know it was for Shonen Jump this week? I got a message as I woke up saying, before you do anything, read this chapter. And I said, okay. And so I woke up groggy, and I read through it, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is one way of hell to start my day. <laughs> yeah. That was uh, something else. It was a hell of a day. It's a hell of a day for sure. So look forward to that. I, we're talking as vague as possible to not potential. I'm not even mentioning the series what it is. I'm just saying you got to go to Zen's channel. Go see what's up. <laughs> go hear the breakdown from him and from his co-host as well. Um, and yeah, anything else planned? Or is it uh, uh, just that for now? Just that for now. Uh, some stuff I'm considering... But I don't know if it's really worth it because I don't feel like it would uh, like pop off. But it would be fun to do. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I know how you feel. That's what my entire series, my entire channel is built around. It's like, yeah, uh, the Go Studios do real well, and then everything else I kind of just do because I want to do. <laughs> and I know in the back of my head, all this would be a lot better if I just focused on one type of thing. But I just refuse to do it. It's the old man in me. And that's why uh, it's fun stuff, making YouTube stuff. I actually had a conversation a while back about Rhyme, because I was saying specifically, why do people put video titles out there and their video titles are like, they did it? And I'm, I don't know about you, but whenever I see a video that says they did it, I go like, I'm not watching that. I don't know what the fuck that's about. I'm not interested. <laughs> if you're not interested enough to tell me what this video is going to be about, I'm not interested in clicking on it. And the only exception I make for that is Rhyme, because I know it's a Yu-Gi-Oh! video. <laughs> it's like, when they, he says, like, oh man, they finally did it, and I see, like, Exodia, I'm like, okay, this is something to do with, like, <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! in some kind of way. Uh, but he was telling me, like, no, that's, that's the strat. You have to, like, be vague to get people to watch your stuff. And I'm like... Man, that makes that that makes it very sad for someone who really likes detailed ass descriptions like me. <laughs> YouTube, it's a sad place. Yeah, uh, but we're both on it, and you can find more stuff on it. As for me on my channel, you can uh, I put up a Final Fantasy stuff. I think by this point I would have released both of the Final Fantasy videos of um, me playing in. Uh, the dungeon, and then me also playing Fall Guys along with Melty Blood and a uh, Fago, I guess, a guide video for lack of a better term. Um, I help. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like using the word guide. Do you know how I feel? Do you do you know this feeling, Zen, of specifically like when you know something good enough, but you know you're not specifically an, a, a good enough expert to be like, I want to help. I'm not sure this will help absolutely everyone. So you feel just kind of weird just putting like, yo, guide. Because in my head, when you put guide, it means that the person is 100% sure this works for everyone. This is 100% the way to go. And I just don't feel like that in a lot of the stuff I do. So I feel really weird putting guide. Where I'm like, this can't help absolutely everyone. Because I won't know because I don't have access to absolutely everything. Does that make sense? Am I speaking? Am I just being like overly yeah, cautious? No, for I no think reason? that makes sense. 
I yeah. think that makes sense. I don't I don't like misleading people. That 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 that's one thing that I specifically do. So I have uh, the only time I ever put guide is when I'm a hundred percent certain and everything that I say in this is infallible. That if someone comes up to me and says like, "Hey, you're wrong on this," I will come back and say, "No, you're wrong." That's the only time I'll ever say like this is a guide for something. Otherwise, I don't like to do it. But yeah, something like that should be coming up um, because our the Fogo anniversary is coming up pretty soon in another couple weeks. In a couple weeks, that would make two weeks away. It would be it's still four weeks away. So I've got oh shit. Um, on Thursday, I'll have two weeks to finish Heaven's Ward before the Elden Ring DLC comes in. <laughs> Because Elden, uh, Elden Ring DLC drops the 20th. Or it might be on the 25th, Oh, actually. yeah, and then after that, it's, uh... It's a little bit difficult for me. I have to figure it out. Apparently there's also a Dragon Dawn Quest... Dawn Trail right after. Yeah, the, the Dawn Trail is also coming up very soon. I mean, At least I know I'm far away from Dawn Trail. There's also a Dragon Quest collab going up right now, I think, on... Yep. It is up, I think, or very soon. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, it has to be up. So I have to go check on that to see what I can quickly pick up. But I have, I'm um, quickly running out of time here because I need to finish this all up before have, before Dawn Trail comes out and the Yokai Watch stuff is gone and I lose access to my Jibanyan couch. <laughs> I'll be very sad. <laughs> if... <laughs> this is why we do it for, baby. This is what I'm here for. And yeah, so more stuff will come up for me in that way. And I'll figure stuff out. I always have st some kind of form of stuff cooking in the background. And in terms of other stuff that I'll be doing, I'll be trying to make a chair right after this recording. So if you see me complaining about a chair, there you go. <laughs> that's when it happened. But that's it for Shonen Archive this week, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you made it this far, the best way to support the channel is to just watch, leave a like, uh, comment if you have anything to say. That always helps out. And we'll be back for more, hopefully next week, unless my work says otherwise. Um, yay! As we get, as we start to barrel closer and closer to uh, some of the end game stuff in Gintama, we're gonna get be getting to the point very soon where certain arcs are gonna be over seven episodes long in terms of arcs. So that's not so bad. <laughs> no, well, the final arc is... Well, we've already discussed this, but the final arc is going to have to be dis uh, cut up. Because the final arc is, I think, over 15 episodes long. And there's just no conceivable way <laughs> for us to uh, watch 15 episodes in time for Tuesday. So we're going to have to cut that up. And then it also doesn't help that the arc doesn't finish until we do the movie. Oh, God. Yeah, we also have a lot we're of movies. We're in the trench at Kuroka struggling right now. I know. Well, I'm, I'm still working on some back-end way to figure out a way for us to do Koroko. Don't worry. We'll figure it out. <laughs> well, join us next week for more Shonen Archive stuff. Until next time, say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Gunshot goes off so I can remember when I'm putting in the gunshot. <laughs> <laughs>